In this video, we're going to discuss what is industrial and organizational psychology. By the end of the video, you should understand the scope of the study in the field of industrial and organizational psychology, as well as be able to describe the history of IO psychology. So let's start talking off about what IO psychology is. So it's a branch of psychology that studies how human behavior and psychology affect work and how they are affected at work. So industrial and organizational psychologists are going to work in academia. So they may be teaching others about what IO psychology is. My um, statistics professor in my master's degree was an IO psychologist. They work in government, consulting firms, and in businesses. And they're working to um, improve hiring processes, efficiency in the workplace, and other things that we will discuss briefly here and then in um, another video as well. So let's separate out the two first. So industrial psychology is going to study job characteristics, applicant characteristics, how to match them so that the applicant matches the job and then becomes more successful. They're going to study employee training and performance appraisal. There's a focus on hiring and maintaining employees. So how can we hire better employees that will stay for a longer period of time? And it considers the legality regarding discrimination in hiring as well. Organizational psychology is more interested in the social aspects of the workplace. So it's gonna study the interactions between people working in organizations and the effects of those interactions on productivity. They're interested in looking at worker satisfaction, motivation, commitment, different management and leadership styles, social norms, role expectations in the workplace. They're also gonna consider harassment and workplace violence. Human factor psychology is a branch of IO psychology, and it's going to look to see how workers interact with the tools that they use and try to design things to optimize those tools for productivity, for safety, for, for health. In other words, looking at the ergonomics of the workplace. These tools can in include interactions with machines, your workstation, like sitting at a desk, as you see here, information displays, um, the local environment, like what's the best type of lighting. I mean, you see in you know, places in the Silicon Valley, they have all sorts of like kind of non-traditional workplace environments to try to increase that productivity. So those are IO psychologists and this human factor psychology that's bringing those changes to those workplaces. Now let's get into the history of ISO psychology. So we've talked about Lillian Gilbreth before. We discussed her when we talked about the history of psychology in the very beginning of the semester. So Lillian Gilbreth is often called the founding mother of IO psychology. Her and her husband did research on motion and time, which analyzed the motions and time required to complete certain tasks to, to eliminate and identify any unnecessary movements. She also made a lot of advances in the ergonomics of the workplace and workplace design, kind of that human factor psychology we just discussed. One of her most enduring legacies is the kitchen work triangle. So this design optimizes the kitchen layouts, positioning the stove, the sink, and the refrigerator at three points on a triangle to minimize the distance and the effort needed to move between these three essential places when you're working. This concept significantly improved kitchen efficiency and became a standard in modern kitchen design. She also designed many other useful items that are still in use today. The pedal trash cans, refrigerator door shelves, the butter compartment in our refrigerators, L-shaped countertops and level countertops. And so things that we kind of take advantage, those are all things that came from Lillian Gilbreth, this founding mother of IO psychology. Another important person in the history of IO psychology is Elton Mayo. So he conducted studies at Western Electric's Hawthorne Works, and this was in the late 1920s and early 1930s. He was interested in examining how human interaction factors enhanced or decreased productivity. He explored interpersonal relations, motivation, and organizational dynamics. So his research really was kind of the origin of organizational psychology. And one of the things he found was that any changes they made to variables resulted in increased productivity. So years later, researchers analyzed the results and noticed that employees were really performed better when researchers or supervisors were observing them and interacted with them. And this became known as the Hawthorne effect. So there was an increase in performance of individuals who are noticed, watched, and paid attention to by researchers or supervisors. 
Again, just suggesting that people's performance changes because they're being observed. And if you think about it, that makes sense, right? When someone's watching you, you wanna do a little bit better. You wanna make sure that you're impressing them because you know you're being watched.